Welcome back, guys. If you guessed the Italian machine was a Necky BU, you were right. This is my 1951 Necky. This is a zigzag and straight stitch only machine. As you can see, the 306K is a straight stitch and zigzag only sitting there on the left. So I'm going to put these two machines up against each other. I know normally I do singers against singers, but this Necky is part of my collection. And it's a zigzag machine, and I think it deserves a, a fair shake at the battle. So uh, I'm going to do a stitch off with these two machines. <clears throat> I'll talk about the Necky a little bit more. I'm going to show you guys some of the features that I like about this machine. And uh, if you guys want to see more on the Necky, you can let me know in the comments. But for now, let's get these uh, machines set up with some denim. I'm going to show you the features on the Necky, and then we'll have the stitch off. I'll let you guys know what one would I keep if I could only keep one. All right, guys. So I'm going to start up here at this uh, upper thread tensioner. Now, if you look at this upper thread tensioner, you'll see there's a plate that's uh, actually embedded inside of the body of the uh, machine that has a bunch of numbers on it. It also has a little dial right here. There's a little dial indicator that points at the numbers and as you turn this tensioner that dial goes up and back. And uh, I found that's a really cool mechanism. I've had this all apart. I've re rebuilt this whole machine. This whole machine I've torn down and refurbished, uh, polished all the chrome and uh, you can see uh, in a previous video I have of this machine how bad this machine was when I got it um, but anyways this is one of my very first machines I got this machine for free and uh, I restored this machine and it sort of gave me the bug and it's sort of part of the reason I collect today <laughs> is uh, all my singers is because the quality of this machine sort of got me looking at more of the singers and, and collecting them but anyways uh, let's get back to this so that's one of the cool features I like about this also on the front, um, let's see if I can get this in the light here. You can see in the, in the front plate here, also there's numbers and there's a little indicator here as well. Now I've painted it red. Uh, it used to just be black, but I've put a little bit of red paint on there. You can see right there, uh, I have it set at five. And, and when you're setting your, um, uh, I'll bring the camera up a bit here for you. When you're setting your, your presser foot tension, that actually moves up and down. For your tension so that's another cool feature I thought that was a really neat thing on this machine this is a, a 15 class machine as well just so you guys know it takes 15 class bobbins so um, that's another thing that's nice about this machine is it's common uh, you can also see here this is your left uh, left right center right so you, you can see over here you can see that needle moving um, and this is your stitch length, um, stitch width, sorry, for your zigzag. And you can lock that by loosening this. And uh, you can see there's a dial. See that dial moving there? That actually locks in. And this is part of this right here. And you can move this, you can move this forward. You can also move this to, uh, to lock it. And then you can turn this knob here. It'll lock. So now I can only go between those two. If I want to just do a little zigzag and then, you know, if you're doing decorative sort of stuff. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so that's one of the cool features on this I also like. Same with the, um, let's see if I can turn this a bit in here and you can see it, the stitch length. It has little indicators as well. There's a little steel indicator there and uh, you can lock that with this dial here. So you can lock your stitch length so if you wanted just to do a short stitch, Back and forth, right? Forward and reverse, because that's your forward and reverse there. Um, and that'll give you equal forward and reverse stitching. So go all the way up, all the way down. So there you go. Okay. So here we are. We're set up with a red thread on top. And I have a green thread on the bottom. I have my needle set in the center position. Stitch the length for the zigzag is at zero. And I have the stitch length for the uh, straight stitch at the longest stitch right now. All right, so uh, let's give it a straight stitch here. There you go. This, uh, this necky runs really smooth. 
Um, I have another Neki, the same model. Uh, the paint was really destroyed on it. I have it all stripped down and it's ready for paint right now, but that'll be a future video. But uh, so anyways, I'm going to get my presser foot up here, or sorry, I'll keep my presser foot down. I'm going to pull my needle out of my material before I set my stitch length to the uh, fullest or the longest or widest setting. And the reason I do that is if your needle's down in here and you don't have it set, um, what will happen is you when you turn this, it'll move your needle in your fabric with your pressure foot down, you could wreck your needle. So I like to take my needle out of my fabric anytime I'm running the zigzag stitch, set the length, put it back down, and then go. You see this machine goes pretty quick. I have, uh, I'm gonna set that back to straight. I have this set up with um, the a Japanese motor. Because the motor that was in this machine had a uh, problem getting the pulley off. It was it was stuck on there and somebody had stripped the screw and the motor needed rebuilding and the only way I could really get it apart completely was to get the pulley off and I didn't want to destroy it so instead of getting frustrated with that motor at the moment I put another motor on here. So anyways there you guys are. That's a straight stitch and a zigzag. Let me get the 306 set up and then we'll go from there. Okay. So here we are at the 306, oops, got the uh, machine threaded up with a green thread up top and a red thread down below. I'll do a straight stitch and a, a zigzag stitch at their longest setting. And uh, this is your left right center for your zigzag, the top dial on a 306. And the bottom dial is your width for your zigzag, okay? Um, this is your lock. So you can see when I turn that, how that goes. So I'm going to bring that to the widest setting, lock that, but I'm going to bring this back. So when these two are straight, that's for straight stitch. When you move that, that's how wide for the zigzag, okay? So let's get it set to straight. Get the needle down. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, let's give her a go. Straight stitch. So there we go. That's your straight. I like to uh, just move this over by hand because I have better control. I'm not that great with a pedal, especially when I'm wearing flip flops right now. <laughs> so I'm going to get my needle out of the fabric, set my width to the widest, put the needle back down, and uh, give it a go. All right, looks good, guys. This machine uh, beat out the 206 in the first zigzag battle. I don't know if you guys seen that. Oh. And uh, if not, you can go back and watch that video. But there it is. Okay, give me a second to uh, go grab my Neki. We'll put the two machines side by side, and I'll let you know what one I would keep if I could only keep one. Okay guys, here we are, 306, 1954, going up against the Neki BU from 1951. Okay, let's take a look at the stitches here. Uh, looks like the 306 might be a little bit longer on stitch length. Not much. You really can't tell the difference there. Those two are really nice. Nice and balanced. Nice and tight. Anyways, guys. When it comes to the stitching, I don't know. They both look the same. Okay, well. Quality of stitching. That's the same. Maybe 306 might be a little bit longer. The winner is the Neki, guys. If uh, I only had these two machines on the shelf and I had to get rid of one, I would say goodbye to my Poro 306 here and keep my Neki. Um, the Neki has a smaller space in the harp here. You can see the difference in the size of the machines there. Uh, but the quality of this Neki is just superior to me. Not that singers aren't great. The Singers are great machines. But this having a little dial on my... 
uh, pressure foot. I like that. I can set it up and know that, okay, when I'm doing leather, I know it should be at this number. When I'm doing two layers or three layers, I have a dial that I could gauge by. So I like that. I really think this is cool. This dial here, when you turn this, you can actually see that little needle move up and down when you're tightening your upper thread tension. That's cool. Also like the fact that everything locks in pretty easily and you got easy movement of all these adjustments, okay? Same with the stitch length, that locks in. I like all the chrome plating with all the gauges or all the numbers are stamped into the steel. It's not, uh, it's not painted on, not anywhere is it painted on. So it wouldn't even matter if this machine got rusty, you'd still be able to gauge where you guys are at, right? So, uh, so there it is, guys. I just thought I'd let you know the Italian beat out the British. But uh, usually I only have the singers going up against each other. These are zigzags. But I have a FAF 332. So let's see if the Italian can beat out the German. All right. Anyways, my dogs are barking. I got to go, guys. There's your winner, Mecky BU from 1951.